Yes, I dream of a better world. Should I dream of a worse? Yes, I desire a wider world. Should I desire an error? When thinking about the future, we tend to imagine this bigger, better world and pave our ways towards it. And we are naturally anxious about all sorts of obstructions that might get in the way of our vision. However, for the sake of an experiment, let's think of a smaller and a worse world, some kind of a highly constrained, confined, dangerous place with very little resources and little comfort. Let's try to picture our future on the moon. Around two years ago, we were sitting in my kitchen in The Hague, having a dinner together and sharing updates on each other's lives. Anna mentioned that since recently, she is a gallery curator whose job is collecting ideas worth sending to the moon. The gallery aims to collect 100 artifacts embodying the best visions to start shaping moon culture. And it plans to deliver this collection to the lunar surface by the end of 2022. Anna told me how she was developing the gallery together with collaborators in the European Space Agency. And then she asked if maybe I would like to contribute to this great ambition. It all sounded so exciting to me. So I said, yes, sure, let's give it a try. Since then, Moon Gallery evolved into a cultural foundation where we act as curators and managers. We reach out to artists, scientists, engineers, and society at large from all over the world, inviting them to join our mission. We are very passionate about this project, and both of us dedicate all of our free time, including sometimes sleepless nights, to make sure that this gallery sees the world on its way to the moon. So, of course, we want to use this opportunity and give you a tour of our gallery with just 100 rooms. The first room exhibits the cleanest air on Earth, collected at the geographic South Pole, Antarctica. The second room is a soothing space. It is filled with content and happy vibrations in the form of a wave graph of a cat's purr. The third room, hmm, that is a yet empty one. Indeed, we still have a few of those. It is not that easy to collect 100 artifacts worth sending to the moon. So now I want to use my chance and ask you a question. What would you send to the moon? What are the ideas you want to promote into the future? And what are the ideas you want to leave behind? The first question that comes up almost inevitably is how would you send a gallery of 100 artworks to the moon? I have to say it was one of the biggest challenges to think of a way to deliver 100 artifacts to the moon when it would cost us approximately one million dollars per kilo to ship our payload. This obstacle was not just making the project quite unlikely to happen, but it was compromising the concept itself, because the number of resources required for its realization was making it grotesque and rather unsustainable. So we had to look for a different approach to solve this challenge. We had to think big but small. In space, size really matters. Size is one of the biggest challenges of space exploration and the disparity between big ideas and resources for their realization often stands in the way of many experiments. But we wanted to find a way to turn those limitations to our advantage and eventually these constraints gave birth to the unique format of the Moon Gallery. 
So remember, I asked you to think of an idea worth sending to the moon. I hope you are really enthusiastic about it. Because I'm going to challenge you to fit your big idea into just one cubic centimeter. A selection of 100 pieces will be integrated in the 10 by 10 grid of the Moon Gallery. In this Petri dish-like gallery, ideas will be preserved and we hope will grow and develop to form a new culture for humanity beyond the Earth planet. And you can visit this gallery or it will visit you. If you think about it, one cubic centimeter is a compact, efficient format for space travel. Just big enough to investigate with the naked eye. And it is just about the size that we see the moon when we look at the sky. Moon gallery participants who answer the calls for proposals are challenged to explore the limitations of their creative medium. Take paper, for example. One artist wrote a letter to the moon, but it took her quite some incredible paper folding in order to join our mission. A musician decided to burn his poem and send us just ashes. So as you can see, thinking big but small is not always about the size. It is a change in perception when constraints become the inspiration for creative solutions. So all of us need our challenges and constraints in order to boost the creativity. And what can be more challenging and inspiring than the moon? Since the dawn of mankind, we looked up towards the sky and the only outer world we could really see in detail was the moon. It has always been a trope of art and our lighthouse guiding the way in the fastness of outer space and offering a collective moment of reflection upon the place of mankind in the universe. As our reference for time, space and culture, it also became a primarily target for scientific exploration, discovery, colonization and habitation of the outer space. As we know, Earth and Moon consist of nearly the same type of rock. And hypothetically, four and a half billion years ago, they were a single hole. However, today, compared to Earth, Moon has a much more austere, spartan, ascetic character. Or how Buzz Aldrin, the second moonwalker of Apollo 11, puts it, magnificent desolation. It is a really hostile and bleak environment with no water, no biological life and virtually no atmosphere to provide breathable air, protect you from radiation, from micrometeorites, nor to keep stable temperature levels. Let's just take a look at the moon. Is this how you imagined it? This is the lunar south pole, possibly a key location for a future colony on the Moon. It is a sweet spot for future lunar missions, as there are the deposits of water ice in permanent darkness, in proximity to a permanent light spots, strategic for harvesting solar energy. Prospecting the habitation scenarios in this scare, desert-like environment, we have to be highly resource efficient, and we are forced to constantly resist the natural conditions of the satellite. But is there a way to turn this scarcity into abundance? Our answer is yes. You just have to think big but small. For example, this. Moon is about four times smaller and 80 times lighter than the Earth. And its gravity results in just one-sixth of what we have here, meaning you can jump six times higher, you can build lighter structures, and you can set the world goal records with just little training. That's what Apollo 14th commander Alan Shepard did, the one 
and the only man to hit a golf ball on the moon. On the moon, with no air resistance and weak gravity, it is technically possible to hit a golf ball for miles. Smallness will give you superpower once you are on the moon. We believe that the most challenging and full of constraints environment, the moon, will bring us to the most creative culture and society. Moon, with its highly demanding, unforgiving character, offers a platform for international cooperation and die-hard sustainable development. At the moment, the human presence beyond Earth planet is still just a matter of survival. But how to make the first steps towards making it habitable? How to turn Moon into this poetic place we are dreaming of at nightfall with a glass of wine? We suggest Moon Gallery of Ideas as the seeds of new culture. We believe that culture makes a distinction between mere survival and life. Sending a gallery of art to the moon is a symbolic gesture, which has a real influence, a way to reboot culture and to rethink our values for a better living on Earth planet. Moon Gallery is a manifestation, neither a place nor an object. Paradoxically, a tiny gallery too small for Earth is designed to last on the Moon as a monumental heritage site for thousands of years. Building an everlasting monument, say a pyramid, on Earth took a joint effort of a great nation. Launching a rocket into space takes a multinational effort. Together, we have just experienced a great reset in our lives, economy, and culture, all triggered by the smallest unseen particles. Following the pandemic news and trends, we discover micro as a new macro. And this is what Moon Gallery is all about, how to think big but small. We are taught that constraints can ruin our ambitious visions. But once we accept them, something really authentic and unthought of can come to life. And the Moon Gallery is a shining example of that. In fact, an idea doesn't take up any room and it can survive in any conditions. Moon Gallery poses a real challenge to us, literally reaching the Moon. But at the same time, it gives us courage here on Earth. Together with the Moon Gallery team, we attempt to search and defy the future-proof values, goals, ethics, and aesthetics from some distance, from different time and space that Moon can offer us. In our quest to collect Moon-inspired ideas, we get to rediscover poetic phenomena here on Earth. Things like the smell of Earth after the rainfall, the purest air, human sounds beyond language, and many more, all thanks to the Moon Gallery artists. Archimedes once said, give me a place to stand, and with a lever, I will move the whole world. Now, when men can stand on the moon, your ideas can serve as the lever. We have to admit that thinking big but small is complicated, but we truly believe that the value of things is not about their size, but about the effort and the creativity behind. So what would be your idea worth spreading on the moon? <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.